Hey entrepreneurs, so if you haven't noticed, I've been reading a lot of books lately about sales, psychology, charisma, influence, and that broader bucket of topics. Because that's so important for us entrepreneurs to be able to convince people of a lot of things, to join our team, to invest in our company, to cover us if they're in the press, and so forth. So that's why my most recent book is called Conversationally Speaking by Patrick King, and it's all about what you think it's about, improving your conversation skills. So it may be pretty self-explanatory why I picked this book. It fits in the broader themes of books I've been reading lately, like I just mentioned, but also conversations are a very important part of getting people to like you, giving them a good impression, and being able to convince them on what you're setting out to do. So without further ado, here are my top three tips that I learned from this book. Number one tip is that you can prepare to give better answers to people's common questions. So if you think about it, a lot of people start off with common questions like, what's up or how are you? These are super overused and they often lead to one-liner conversations. But the good news is that you can prepare for these in advance because we get them so much. Some things that you don't want to do are conversation killers like I'm fine, thanks, or so forth. These are super broad and vague answers and they're not good for driving forward your conversation. So instead, what you should do is respond with answers that lead to more questions. You can start with a personal story. For example, I'm doing great. I just got back from a trip to Rome. And then this draws them in and then they can throw in their own stories from which you can bounce off of. So that's a quick and easy tip on how to not kill your conversations at the first get-go. Number two tip is how we end our conversations is also super important because this is based on the recency effect. And what that is, is that the most recent things that happen are the most noticeable or memorable. So some things to note about finishing conversations is don't cut them off and bow out too soon. Give them the ability to finish developing their story and also give them the feedback that they're looking for because every conversation, if you think about it, has some purpose, whether that be entertainment, information gathering, or pleasure. The author talks about more of these in the book. I'm not going to cover this right now, but it's pretty self-explanatory too. One thing that he recommends is that giving a witty summary like a joke or a witty comment about what you just talked about is a great way to end the conversation and wrap it up nicely, making them want to talk to you more in the future. This is obviously super powerful, but it's pretty difficult. So you have to think on the spot and maybe practice some bit too to feel comfortable doing this. Last but not least, tip number three is body language. And so if you think about it, only a small part of your overall communication is from your words. There are a lot of cumulative signals you sent from your face, from your body language, that need to all be aligned in order to be sending a consistent message. If they aren't aligned, you'll be giving off mixed signals, which could make them have a bad gut feeling about you. So you don't want to do that. For example, some things he touches on are crossed arms, leaning in and nodding, which shows off that you're engaged or interested, or leaning away, which shows off that you or they could be disinterested. So just a lot of stuff to be mindful of and practice, look at yourself in the mirror, and just get good at body language so you can send a consistent message. So that's it for my three tips, but I also want to touch on some broader thoughts about this book. It's interesting because the author is also a social skills and dating coach, and some reviewers didn't like that about him, especially the part of the books where he brings up those dating examples or turn off for several reviewers. But I didn't think that was personally that big of a deal, and it still provided good knowledge to use not only for social skills, but also for businesses and other interpersonal relationships. This is also a super short book, super quick read, so definitely I think you should give it a skim. And it does have a noticeable overlap with a lot of the other books I've been reading in this category, like the Charisma book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. So it definitely felt like he read those and summarized it for himself in this book. But that's okay in my opinion because repetition is good for memory and for learning. And he also does include new topics and tips that I haven't seen before. So once again, I think you should grab this one off the shelves, give it a really quick read, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, if you like this comment, you can support me by smashing the like button, subscribing to catch future ones, and I'll see you guys next time.